Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the first video tutorial for uh, the SQL Undercover Inspector. Uh, I'm Adrian from SQL Undercover, or you may know me as ADBA uh, for if you're in the Slack community or if you've been uh, looking at our GitHub repository. Um, so today we're just going to run through the, the, the basics of the, um, the installation. Um, so let's get cracking. So the first thing we're going to do is, um, for demonstration purposes, I've got the this database called DBA. Um, now I created this purely just for this demonstration. It's completely blank. We've got no tables, no stored procedures, nothing in it. Completely empty. Now the first thing we've got to do if we're going to install uh, the inspector is to go and grab the code. Now the easiest way um, is because no one actually remembers URLs to GitHub links or anything like that. So the best place to go is to go straight to SQLOnTheCover.com, which will chuck you straight onto our uh, blog website. Click on the little GitHub link here. This will take you directly to our GitHub repository and you will find the inspector under the SQL Undercover Inspector folder. Grab the SQL file and I find, you know, if you don't want to save this stuff locally, um, just simply hit raw view and then what raw view will do is it will just open it up in a new page where you can just simply uh, control A, control C just to grab everything there. So once you're happy you've got everything there, just jump back over to your SQL Server and query the database that you want to use for reporting purposes. So for, for my example here, I'm going to use this DBA database. Uh, this DBA database, what it's going to do is going to, uh, all the data that's collected from the inspector is all going to get put into the tables that we're going to create with the installation. Uh, and all the store procedures and stuff that are going to get created, all going to get created in there. Um, keeps it nice and tidy. So all you need to do at this point, you don't need to do anything with the script other than hit F5 within your database. Nice and easy. And what it will do is it will give you a little output in the Messages tab, which will give you an example execution um, of the stored procedure that it's just created. So if I just show you, just demonstrate, at this stage we've not created any tables, but we have created a stored procedure, and this stored procedure is the inspector setup and this inspector setup is going to be responsible for actually installing the inspector. So I'm just going to open up a new tab, copy and paste that in there. Now don't worry too much because if for example you cancel this window, you got distracted, someone come up to you and said hey I've dropped some stuff in prod, come and help me out now, you know, or <laughs> run an update with no where clause, don't worry because what you can do, if you've forgotten the command, you can simply just pop at help equals one not in caps because that won't work and that will give you the same statement out again so it will just give you the output command again just in case you forgot it or lost it or whatever so if in my example here you're running on a single server uh, I'm not interested in centralizing data, I'm not looking at reports on more than one server at a go. I'm just going to work on this one simple instance I've got here. Uh, I'm not going to worry about link server because I'm not going to pump any of this data anywhere else other than the instance I'm on. Um, so the things I would be interested in changing here are potentially my data drive and my log drive. This is only for use with um, with one of the modules that, that checks for database files, whether you've got your data files on log drives, log drives on data files, etc. Um, so you don't have to worry about that too much. And, and even if you don't do that at installation stage, you're going to find that in the settings table. It's exactly the same for backups path. Don't worry too much. If you don't set it at this point in installation, you get a chance to check it later. Um, the same with all of this stuff here in this big block. You're going to get to change that stuff later on, so it's not the end of the world if you don't change it now. One thing that is important is if you do want to uh, create job schedules for the jobs that get created, set it to a 1. You're going to save yourself some time, especially if you're going to do this on multiple servers. You, you don't want to go doing this on 12 servers, manually creating schedules or dropping and recreating jobs. Uh, just make it easy to set the schedules. Um, unless you want something specific of course uh, and this flag here don't worry too much if it is your first run 
it's gonna it's gonna automatically determine it's your first run and it's gonna set that to a one anyway uh, that's then more for if you've already got an installation and you want to revert things back to the vanilla stage out of the box you're gonna set that to a one and it's just gonna revert everything back to back to square one so for now I'm just gonna keep everything pretty much basic I change these two things here and I'm gonna run it and that's gonna run in the context of my database name here and it's going to give you a small output here to say um, whether you need to uh, download any prerequisites or anything like that. It's going to tell you if you if you'd had that problem, uh, such as FN split string, which at the moment for 1.4 you're going to need, but V2 is going to have it included. Um, and it, it just tells you a little bit of detail about some of the tables that are important, um, such as the current servers table, uh, email recipients, settings table. Now it's going to give you a very quick overview on the settings table. And as we can see, also it's created all these new tables. So in the settings table, lots of those things that are in the setup there can be adjusted here. So this is why I was saying don't worry too much about you know setting those things at, at point of installation. It's not the end of the world. You can come in here and edit any of these things at any given time. It doesn't really matter. So that's the basic installation on how to get started on installing it. Uh, now what does it do? You know, what happens when it runs? How does it run? So if you set schedules you're going to get um, some schedules in these jobs and they're going to run automatically but if you wanted to just kick it off manually to see what it does, which I would imagine you want to do, um, kick off the collection it's going to go and collect some data on all of the modules because most of them will be enabled for the default and then if you'd specified an email recipient in here and you run the report as long as you've got deep email set up and everything you're going to get an email of the HTML report but of course if you didn't do that if you're just testing uh, you will find that HTML data uh, but you'll have to just go digging in the report data table in here And then you can just simply copy that out and you can you can you know paste it into a an online editor or you can pop it into a into a file. So that's the way to get started, that's the way to get installing. Uh if you're not centralizing the data, of course there's different ways of uh centralizing the data, such as the PowerShell collection, um which you can use, or if you was using Link Server, um I'm gonna do uh, a separate video just to demonstrate the link server setup uh, because it'll take a few minutes just to go through that stuff but um, that's going to get you up and running single instance that's how you do it go and get it from a github repository download it run it hit the store procedure away you go thanks very much for viewing guys